Alrighty, well, thanks to those of you that checked out part one of the Q&A. This is part two of the weekly Q&A. And thanks to all of you guys that submitted questions for part one and who ultimately got your questions about to be answered here on part two and even those that I didn't get to. Uh, too bad, so sad. Hopefully next time. There's always a next time. Um, we're going to go ahead and get started, though. The Ryan Steele kicks us off by asking non-wrestling related. Uh, will Donald Trump run again in 2020? What are his chances of winning that time? And who is best suited to run against him as either a Democrat or as a third party candidate? Um, first things first, unless the Russia investigation looks so incredibly bad that it is not politically feasible in any way for him to run and potentially win, then he's running in 2020 just based solely off of ego. Solely off of ego. What are his chances of winning? Um, at least 55% if I had to handicap it right now because he's the incumbent. So that is always a natural built-in advantage. If you assume there's some type of blue wave or blue tsunami coming in 2018 that could potentially energize the democratic slash progressive base, however, um, we saw this happen with Barack Obama in 2010. In 2012, he beat Romney pretty resoundingly. So that in and of itself does not automatically carry over to the presidential election. So be careful of thinking that automatically is going to because the history just doesn't back you up on that. Same thing if you want to go back to the Clinton presidency. In 94, you had Newt Gingrich and the Republicans in their contract with America. They swept into power in Congress. Bill Clinton won a second term relatively convincingly in 96. Um, and who is best suited to run against him? Um, I think this is the challenge for the Democratic Party right now. I don't know if there is a clear-cut runaway uh, prospect. Bernie's too fucking old. Sorry, feel the burn, people. He's too fucking old. No, no, no. If you wanted it, you should have put a ring on it in 2016. You didn't. Too bad. So sad. You could take some of his ideas and put it onto somebody younger. Elizabeth Warren is not exciting enough. She does not captivate the people. You need somebody with some level of charisma, some ability to connect. And I'm sorry, Elizabeth Warren is going to put people to sleep. Just not going to get the job done. Just not. Joe Biden should have run in 2016 maybe would have been able to win over a few more working class white voters in places like the Philadelphia suburbs, um, in certain places in Michigan and Wisconsin that Hillary was unable to. But now another old white fuck running in 2020? No thank you, I will pass. Uh, so that brings you to who's the new wave. You're going to hear the names like Kamala Harris and Cory Booker. Um, you know, you look at them if Corey wants to run for president, that's fine, uh, but you better get married. Because if you don't, good luck to you. Kamala is somebody that has kind of somewhat safely positioned herself as somebody that people will look to and look at. One way to potentially counter Trump in 2020 is to go with the race and or gender side of things. And Kamala encompasses all of that. So strategically, it might make some sense. But I don't know if she's quite ready for that level of spotlight yet. So you either have to go with somebody that can appeal to the working class white voters that Trump won in pretty big numbers in key places in 2016, or you need to go with somebody young, fresh, and charismatic, or you need to go with flat out superstar. So to me, I look at it as you have three options that could potentially be appealing uh, as an opponent to Trump. And even then, I have some questions. Uh, Joseph Kennedy III, young dude, Kennedy name, so you've got some rock star built in there, kind of trying to position himself as a person of the people, but he might not quite be ready for prime time yet. Um, I look at Amy Klobuchar, talking about the senator, senator from Minnesota. So she comes from the Midwest. She's very popular in her home state. She could potentially play well in places like Wisconsin, like Michigan, like Iowa, like Ohio, like Pennsylvania. 
and flip some of those states. And if, if the Democrats in 2020 are just looking to win the White House back, then maybe not worry so much about some of the states that Obama won in 20, 2008, 2012, and focus more on just getting it back to 270, because that's all you need to do. You know, maybe worry about trying to get to 300 as opposed to 400. And it felt like Hillary was kind of trying to run a campaign at times where she was trying to get to 400 instead of making sure she could even get to 300 or let alone 270 first. Um, and I think Klobuchar could do that. She's younger than Elizabeth Warren, but she has a lot of those same uh, progressive chops to her. Um, and the last person is Oprah. If you want to go superstar, it doesn't go bigger star than Oprah. Like, Trump is Trump, but he doesn't have the star power of Oprah. And Oprah can play well in those white working class suburban families. She can. So this is a choice of where they want to go. But right now, I think that party is so stupid, I don't know that they have a coherent, consistent message that they can run on in 2020. Um, it's one of those things like when the GOP ran their campaign with a Mormon at the top of the ticket in 2012, they really sat there and screwed themselves because Romney was not going to get the excitement and enthusiasm of the evangelical Christians like other candidates could. And then they really didn't have a good message. There comes a point in time where saying, hey, I'm not that guy, doesn't carry enough weight. You have to be about something, not just against everything. And that's going to be a major problem for the Democrats. And I don't know if they have the uh, intelligence, frankly, politically, to be able to figure shit out. Because whatever messaging they might have right now completely sucks. And a lot of their potential top candidates completely suck. That's just the way it is. Uh, Peter Pooh asks, rank these five female body types best to worst. Oh, baby. Skinny with flat butt and boobs. So white girl. Uh, skinny with big boobs and a butt. Slim thick with big boobs, butt and thighs. Thick with big boobs, but thighs and belly. And fat with gigantic boobs, butt, thighs and belly. Mm, 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 mm. So I will go... Uh, one would be, you know, even then it's like, it could depend on, for me, for me, you know, it could also depend on like, their eyes, their smile, how they present themselves, how they carry themselves, um, how they kind of look, but also about their personality. Like, is it just a, a vomit of crap when they open their mouth? Um, do, is there something there? So... But if we're judging just off of superficial, and you're asking me just off of superficial, uh, one would probably be uh, skinny with big boobs and butt, just because it's easier to throw them out. I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm not. Uh, number two, thick with big boobs and butt, thighs and belly. Uh, three, probably uh, fat with gigantic boobs, butt, thighs and belly. Because if they've got a big belly anyways, well, you might as well have a fucking baby then. Uh, number four would be skinny with big boobs and butt. And number five would be white girl. That would be skinny with flat boobs and a butt. There you go. Uh, Magnificent Matt asks, will you ever bring back the Retro Wrestling Review Series? Yes. Soon. WNC Show. Is Vince Russo as bad or damaging uh, to professional wrestling as fans and Jim Cornette say he is? Russo's done some dumb, idiotic, bad crap to the business over the years. He has also done some good things for the business over the years that too often get overshadowed, in part because Russo tries to take credit for everything, and too often because others want to blame him for everything. The truth, obviously, is always going to be somewhere in the middle. Uh, he is not nearly as bad or damaging as fans and Cornette say he is, because the truth of the matter is he's been irrelevant for a long period of time now. Mark Whalen, what was worse, the Vince Russo era, era excuse me, of WCW or the Vince Russo era of TNA? I think easily the Vince Russo era of WCW. Uh, Byron Andreas, is WWE going to induct Evolution into the WWE Hall of Fame? Would they do it knowing that it's going to give Ric Flair a third induction? Well, I mean, when you think about all the ways you would induct God, Triple H, into the Hall of Fame, Singles Wrestler, DX, Evolution, I mean, the game, 
cerebral assassin, king of kings, and you say they're all monikers tied to one person, but they are individual reasons why you inducted somebody into your Hall of Fame. Um, so, I don't know if they will. I don't think so. Probably not. A real Benzillion. What one wrestler would you bring from Japan to WWE? Um, God, I hate to say it, but it's true because I do feel like there's some money to be made. And if there's one thing you can never say about me is even if I don't like the dude, even if I don't uh, get down with how they do things, um, I will always be a businessman first and foremost. And if I see a pathway, an opportunity, an avenue to make money, then I'm going to go down it. Uh, it's Kenny Omega. That would probably be the guy from Japan that I would bring in with the thought that he could help generate potentially the most revenue. It's Omega, period. Uh, LALT87, thoughts on the Ronda Rousey Alexa Bliss Raw segment? Again, didn't watch Raw, so don't know, and probably if I watch it, won't particularly care. Ben RFC2, do you think Rusev should win at Extreme Rules? If you're going to have him win, just to have him immediately drop it back to AJ Styles and or somebody else, then what the fuck was the point? It's one gigantic waste of time. Um, Rusev and the Rusev Day gimmick got over, uh, but I don't know if it got world champion over. Someday, maybe, but not right now. Horror Movie Review 73. Did Kane unmasking in 2003 change his career forever for the worse? Yes. Especially because they took off his fucking mask and didn't put the world title on him. They did not properly validate him. If you're going to make that dramatically different of a seismic reshift in how you're packaging and presenting a character, you must validate that. And the only way they could validate that was to sit there when he unmasked and have him win the whole shebang bang but of course, we're talking about Reign of Terror, God, and everything else, and it just wasn't going to happen. And it hurt him, and frankly, that character never recovered. That's what I think. Jens asks, who has the potential to become the next Trish Stratus? Um, none of them women in WWE right now, that's for damn sure. But in seriousness, in terms of who the company would be most likely to try and push like that... Um, it probably would be Alexa Bliss. Uh, and then Johnny Raslin is closing us out by f asking, your thoughts on David Arquette's return to pro wrestling? Fuck it. Why not? Why effing not? Let's get ready to rumble. That's what I got to say about that. So anyways... That's it for part two of this weekly Q&A. Thanks again for all of you that submitted your questions. I'll have some other videos coming up in the next few days. For those of you wondering, where is the Money in the Bank review? The reality is, I just don't have enough time to watch the damn thing. Therefore, not enough time to review the damn thing. I might, but we get more and more away from the event. I just don't find it very likely that I'm going to, because that's an awful lot of time to waste on a show that probably wasn't very good. But anyways, I am the Schleig Daddy, of course, and this is OTRS Central. As the t-shirt says, I used to fucking buy by now. It's not the wrestling show you want, just the wrestling show you need. I will see you later.